Welcome to another episode of Two Chairs, One Technology, a Roland Schwartz video blog on interesting aspects around LT, LT Advanced. I'm joined another time by Thorsten Hertel, our OTA product specialist. Welcome, Thorsten. Thanks, Andreas. Um, Thorsten, the last time we talked in great detail about our um, approach to test um, LT MIMO, and of course, there are all the other approaches. So from that discussion, it seemed to me that uh, MIMO testing over the air in general adds a lot of complexity. Um, from your perspective, is there any simple, easy way to determine a figure of merit for the MIMO performance of an LTE-capable device? There is. Um, yes, there is. So first of all, let's look at the overall uh, MIMO performance of a device. So um, generally, it is being determined by either the MIMO uh, antenna pair subsystem, uh, shown in this uh, graphic right here, two antennas and then the, the internal antenna correlation, and then uh, the uh, two by two MIMO receiver. Both of these uh, are very important to determine really the overall figure of merit of the, uh, the MIMO performance. But there is a way to really just look at the figure of merit of the antenna subsystem performance uh, without the added complexity, without having to do um, a full LTE MIMO measurement and, and simply looking at the antennas one by one with a very regular uh, SISO system. So what we're doing here is really looking at the antenna subsystem performance and we should highlight the best BIMO performance is achieved when the two antenna patterns are totally uncorrelated. So very, very dissimilar. So the envelope correlation coefficient, ECC, is basically a figure of merit of how correlated your antenna patterns are. And in order to determine the ECC value using a rather complex equation, you need to determine the complex radiation patterns radiated by each of the antennas. Mm -hmm. And which range is that ECC value? The, the range goes from 0 to 1, a very linear range, with uh, 0 being um, best MIMO gain for the device under test because of the uh, antennas uh, being completely uncorrelated, to ECC of 1 means no MIMO gain at all, and the antennas are completely correlated. So the target would definitely be to design a system that goes to an ECC value of 0, or as close as possible? As, as close as possible, absolutely. Okay. So we can determine uh, with our systems the ECC using um, a variety of different approaches. From a high level, we are looking at um, two basic approaches. The, the passive approach, where we just look at the antenna by itself, we're using a network analyzer and determining the complex antenna radiation pattern of the device, basically complex S21 measurements. And in the active approach, or in the, and in the active approach, yes, we are going to use the uh, device under test, and we're collecting um, from the chipset the complex IQ data, meaning the, uh, the complex RSSI that the baseband is uh, going to deliver. Mm -hmm. So our latest approach to look at uh, the active ECC of a device is uh, what we call the synchronized RSSI approach. So here, relying on um, three different components, basically. The client app on our um, measurement software, the test app on the device, and then the, the API of the chipset. And the natural progression is that the client app on our software is pinging the test app on the device under test uh, to provide the complex RSSI or the complex IQ data. The test app, in turn, will query that exact complex RSSI data from the chipset through its API. It's getting that data, and it's sending the data back through the LTE link and UDP protocol. OK, so let me get that right. So we have an established connection to the device under test Correct. over LTE. Yes. And our client app in the software pings the app on the device on the test. And the uh, app on the device on the test um, uses the API function to talk to the chipsets to get the IQ data that we send back over the established LTE link to our software and where we do our analysis. Is Absolutely. That? Absolutely. OK. That's and pretty straightforward. <coughs> and the beauty of this uh, approach is there is no overhead at all. There is no user interaction. There is no on-device logging. It's basically live, live logging. 
Okay, so the need is, of course, that chipsets are supporting this. Is that uh, widespread in the market right now? It's, it's not. Um, especially in Europe, there's heavy opposition to provide the complex RSSI data. The magnitude data is no problem, but uh, European chipset uh, suppliers are especially hesitant to provide that functionality. Okay, but uh, I guess we are working in standardization bodies and organizations to open up uh, uh, this approach to, to a especially wider exception? Especially some of the carriers are doing that, absolutely. Okay, okay. So in order to validate this uh, new approach to us, and also to industry actually, uh, we utilize the CTI reference antenna. And this antenna is a um, external antenna with the uh, two antennas uh, designed on this PCB connected with the RF connectors to uh, RF cables inside the cage. And what you then do for the active approach is uh, take a device under test with a test app on it, put it inside the cage, and then uh, put the RF connectors and connect it to the primary and secondary ports of the device under test, mm -hmm. close up the lid, and with that you have your reference antenna, sorry, your reference device connected to an external reference antenna that has known MIMO antenna performance. So known efficiency, known gain imbalance, and known ECC. So you're saying reference antennas, are there more than one reference antenna, or is that it? Th there are reference antennas for a variety of different bands. This particular antenna is for band 13, and this pair, or this set of um, reference antennas comes in um, a good antenna, so it has a very low ECC value. It has a nominal antenna, which is the one that we're using here, with a, again, mid-range ECC value. Um, this particular set here has uh, an ECC value of uh, anywhere between 0 0.3 to 0 0.4, mm -hmm. as published in the literature. And then there's a, a bad antenna as well, with uh, obviously a, a much higher ECC value. Mm -hmm. But for, for this validation, again, we used the band 13 antenna, nominal, uh, with its nominal ECC performance, and uh, we performed three different tests. Okay, what, what results were you seeing? So, um, again, three different tests, two active tests with two separate devices. Each of the devices had to have its, its own test app on it. So we did uh, the first active test with DOT number one, uh, and it delivered an ECC value of 0 0.31. The second test, again, same antenna, different device, different test app on it, <coughs> delivered an ECC value of 0 0.32. And then last but not least, we took the same antenna, cabled it up, and did um, complex uh, S21 measurements with the VNA, so passive measurements of the antenna only, and we received an ECC value of 0 0.34. And that basically validates uh, this very new synchronized RSSI approach. Thorsten, thank you very much for the explanation on the envelope correlation coefficient. Did I say that right? That's correct, ECC, envelope correlation coefficient. Excellent. Thank you very much for that explanation. Thanks for watching Two Chairs, One Technology, a Roden Schwartz video blog on LTE and LTE Advanced.